So Puff just released their album, Morbid Stuff, and they're a Canadian punk rock band, and this is their third album. And it's been three years since their last album, The Dream Is Over. The album was beloved by both fans and critics, and it ended up on several best albums of 2016 lists, including Stereo Gum, Noisy, and The New York Times. And uh, our video editor, Snarky Mark, actually gave that album a praises rating when we reviewed it three years ago, meaning he felt it was a masterpiece. Uh, the members of Pup seem to be very young, but their sound draws influences from music from several decades ago. Mm-hmm. The group combines a 90s indie garage rock sound of early Weezer with the angsty pop punk style found on brand new's debut album, Your Favorite Weapon. Also, singer Stefan Babcock uses the slightly whiny slash shouting vocal delivery of indie punk musician Jeff Rosenstock. So with their sophomore album being considered somewhat perfect, like where does a band go for album number three is the question I was asking. Mm. The album starts off with a title track, and it seems clear to me that Pup are going to do the exact same thing on this record, and I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> Pretty much this that song sets the tone of like the record containing songs about depression, death, and disconnection. The three Ds, my friend. Um, <laughs> Musically, the band still maintains their chaotic alternative rock sound with many chord progressions that change up throughout a song while vocally they're lamenting and screaming sassy, sarcastic, and self-loathing lyrics, the three S's. Mm. Um, So, liked it. I'm going to get into some songs I liked, but I want to know if you two never heard this band before. No, I never did. First reaction, Devin. Um, I was extremely surprised that I liked it as much as I did. Because you usually hate things all the time, right? Well, no, no, I just, I don't really like, I guess like this type Okay, gotcha. of music in particular. I don't know. It, it, after the first song, the Morbid Stuff song, I thought the instrumentals were great. I thought it was an upbeat vibe and I like, I thought I was gonna like, not like the, the lead singer's voice, but honestly thought it was pretty good. It's a lot yeah. of gang vocals throughout the album. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was I was surprised I liked it as much as I did. Caroline, I was actually pegging you as the indie punk rock fan of the three of us. What did you well, think? Well, you are going to be sorely disappointed. Oh, I was oh. wrong. Because <laughs> I liked two songs off of this album, <laughs> and the rest of it I just couldn't. I just, I, okay. Yeah, I didn't like, like, like everything, what you were talking about, his singing voice like I wanted to find a way to put it into words what about his voice that I hated so much did I hit and it it's exactly okay. what you described I guess it's another band that just like makes music that could have been made 20 years ago mm-hmm. right because of the indie rock sound like I guess and it just mm. like sounds like an album I used to listen to you know when I was in like 2003 or something or like what right. was on the radio right they're bringing it back and it shouldn't, <laughs> it shouldn't leave it where it is okay we're going to talk about songs I liked, and you tell me what you didn't like about it. So It's going to be the same answer yeah. for every song. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Kids, uh, the romantically uh, yet slightly bleak tune, had like the hard-hitting drums, distorted guitars, vocals, and contained one of my favorite lyrics in the album. Just like a kid, I've been navigating my way through a mind-numbing reality of a godless existence. I'm like, huh. Samesies. <laughs> Samesies. <laughs> Scorpion Hill starts off like a slow tempo track, leads to like with, with like a soft rhythm guitar. Mm. Remember that song, Devin? And then all mm. of a sudden, like it kicks into like this high speed punk jam. Yeah, yeah, and as yeah. a as a, not a fan of punk rock, Devin, I guess that's one of the highlights. You agree? Mm. Uh, and although the message on that song is uh, is about like a family man who's just been laid off and yeah. on the verge of snapping, and it's kind of a downer. Yeah, but I think yeah. that the upbeat, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, near the end, I was like, right. "What the?" F-? Like when she finds the gun, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I was like, like you know, no. it, the upbeat, hard rocking instrumentation. I think it should have a smile on every kid in that circle pit when they play a song live. Uh, the topic of death is presented literally on the heavy power pop track "Closure," and also mm. wishfully on the bitter track "See You at Your Funeral," where he's like hoping his current ex girlfriend will be. Basically taking a dirt nap real soon because yeah. he sees her at the grocery store and he's like, you know, I hope next uh, time I see yeah. you is at your funeral. And that's that emo stuff that Brand mm-hmm. New does. But it's just like you feel that like before when like especially at that age, these breakups and you just wish death upon like, you know, the, your your yeah, ex. Yeah. So 
lyrically, Caroline, um, forget like how he his voice sounds. Is the music bothering you too, as well as what he's talking about? It's not that it bothers me; it just doesn't do anything for me. If anything, it bores me. Like if anything, I found myself unable to focus on it. I didn't wasn't like engaged in it, and like mm. music should be engaging. You couldn't relate to it then. You never yeah. wished death upon someone, or I mean, found of course the gun. I have. <laughs> like I just, I don't know. I feel like content like that in music isn't new or interesting and i don't mm. think they were approaching it in an interesting way it's not even bland it's like you know like it you know what you're signing up for um never didn't well <laughs> apparently yeah. Yeah. um but like i guess like by and i i think even by like the second and a half song i was like oh i know i i've basically heard every single song on this album already they sound like so many like bands that I just never wanted to revisit. And now it's like, oh, my God, I'm thinking about, you know, being 13 on the bus and like all these terrible things happening in my life. Oh, um, OK, so we're, we're opening a door here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like that aside, there was nothing new or interesting going on for okay. enough for me to care. Mm. I will proceed. Sorry. Okay. 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 Um, I want to get to my favorite track, and Devin, I'm going to ask you this. So I'm talking okay. about the song Full Blown Meltdown, and okay. that was like this hardcore screamo tune featuring some of the angriest, distorted, and loudest vocals on the whole album. I loved the how he points out our obsession with mentally suffering musicians when he's like, how long will self-destruction be alluring? Mm. But then he's self-aware when he says, I fetishize them too. It's pretty messed up, isn't it? Yeah. Before concluding, make no mistake, I know exactly what I'm doing. Mm. Plus, that pulse pounding metal outro was f-ing sweet. I love and that. So people are saying, uh, some critics said like, "Oh, that's not like what the other music that on the album is sounding like." But I'm like, they needed the song to sound like that for what he was trying to get across. Right, right, right. And I like the. I guess you agree then. Yeah, yeah. and the, the line he says like. Oh, it's just music after all, and half the crap I say is just things I've stolen from bathroom walls. And I was like, I was laughing at that. It's almost ties into what Caroline's kind of saying. Like they are, he knows he's stealing from other stuff. Yeah, but it's it works. I think like he, as he's long aware. as he says he knows. That. Yeah, as long as he says he knows. <laughs> yeah, like eh, it's all right. No, I I, I really <laughs> liked it. I really liked it though. It's in your face type. Right. I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> I don't know. I just love how heavy it was and just like how it was just fun. I don't know. And it, it was kind of different from like, like you said, from every other um, song on the album. Yeah. So yeah, just, I had a fun time with it. And uh, all the songs in between, I thought were good to that. I haven't mentioned. I don't know if there's songs you like that. I didn't talk about sibling rivalry where they go. Camp, he goes camping with his sister and they in, in the and he's describing like the lake uh, free at last when he's like when that song, when he's saying like, you know, just because. You're sadder than me. You're special. And it's just like, you know, he's talking about himself. How about some goddamn subtlety once in a while? Mm-hmm. And there's no subtlety in his lyrics whatsoever, et cetera, et cetera. It's just I can't think. Of, I, I, I mean, there are songs I will talk about in a negative way, but I don't want to take every song that from you that you want to talk about that you like. Right, right. What did you think about the the bloody Mary Kate and Ashley song? OK, so that's my first like complaint uh, yeah. slightly because. Song sounds great. Yeah. Bloody Mary, we all played when we were like kids. Yeah. But I didn't like the way they pulled the Mary Kate and Ashley into the story. It doesn't have to do with yeah. them. Yeah, that's true. Like, and then we like, make any should sense. I call you Mary Kate or Ashley? Why would you call her Ashley if her name was Mary? Yeah. Like, you didn't figure out how to work that in. They were reaching a little bit there. Right. Okay. Just a little. It's that for that 90s nostalgia. <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah, so uh, I think we covered like all the songs. Um, I'll give my rating first. Then I think they put out the same record and did it successfully. They used the uh, "if it ain't broke, don't fix it" model, but added some like enticing allure here and there. It's pretty amazing how they can present such negative topics to such positive instrumentation, and it lives up to the name of the title of the album. This album is almost flawless. My only complaint, beside the one song we mentioned, is the final track "City." I thought was too slow and slightly dull which kills the momentum of the album. Plus the song sounds like it just cuts off at the end. Mm. Other than that, another fantastic export from Canada, eh? So I'm going to give this mm-hmm. album a buy this. Devin, go ahead. All right. 
I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. Like I had a ton of fun with this album, and I would definitely go back and like, um, what is it? Listen to more of their stuff and any new albums that come out after. So mm. I'm gonna say buy this. All right. So if you heard a new pup album, let's know. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, All right. Really so let's get thing. to Caroline's rating, which. Uh, she will elaborate on. Yeah, I mean, I basically already said everything I wanted to say. Um, it wasn't, it, it didn't. Bad? It wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad. Mm. And it, like, it didn't bother me, me as much as, like, some of the other albums we've reviewed previously. Like, I could listen to it. It didn't make me, like, it didn't make me speed 20 miles over the limit just because I'm so angry. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it didn't click for me. It didn't do anything for me. So I'm just going to say skip this. <laughs> Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, odd woman out, but what can you do? So you got to do better to impress Caroline. <laughs> Just for me. Uh, it might alienate everyone else because you have to pretty much um, throw out the whole recipe, start over. Well, I mean, if you're only using one recipe for every album, <laughs> then maybe you should find another one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we really want to hear your comments in the, in the comments below, or actually you can send us an email. We'd love to know those thoughts. Mm-hmm.